Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a fun unboxing for you. Yes, I have gone shopping once again at Book Outlet, which is one of my favorite retailers for getting brand new books at a very inexpensive price. And today we're gonna take a look at what's inside. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Katie and welcome to Life in the Mundane. I am a second generation homeschool mom of six beautiful kiddos and on this channel, we talk all things resources. I love to share with you resources that are gonna help you in your homeschooling and help encourage you in your biblical parenting and how you can utilize those to their fullest potential so that you can make the most of the little mom. All right, I am really excited to dive into this. Book Outlet, if you guys are not aware, is a great company that offers discounted books, but they're all brand new. Um, and I will drop a link down in the description where you guys can check them out. And if it is your first time ordering, through them, you can actually use my link to get $10 off your very first purchase. They have free shipping after only just $30, $35, something like that. So it makes it really affordable and you earn points every time you purchase that can be redeemed for more free books. So without further ado, let's open the boxes. All right, so first things first are these brand new books. I have never read these before, but they looked so interesting. And I have some seriously um, reluctant readers. And so I'm always looking for things that might engage them. And these just looked great. They are called Hazard Tales and they are all historically based uh, graphic novels. And so I know that my boys and probably my girls are really gonna love these. So we've got Major Impossible, which is a tale about the Grand Canyon. Treaties, Trenches, Mud and Blood, which is a tale about World War I. Big Bad Ironclad, which is a tale about the Civil War. Raid of No Return, which is World War II. And Lafayette, which is a, revolution, a revolutionary war tale. So we're gonna be studying a lot of these different wars next year. And so I love the idea of pulling these out and having my kids be able to read them. If you check it out, they've got, like I said, the graphic novel, um, but it is all done. It has all the historical dates there. I have no idea how these are gonna turn out. If you guys have read them before, be sure to drop it down in the comments. And I promise to update you after we've read a few. Next is 40 Acres and Maybe a Mule. And it's all about the reconstruction after the Civil War and how these two brothers were promised 40 acres and a mule and to see what happens throughout that process as they are having their freedom and having a lot of their rights questioned. Another one is The Moonshiner's Son. This one just looked really interesting. This is probably one that I will read with my older boys. Um, I don't know that I'll read it as a read aloud with all of the kids, but it is about a moonshiner's son and how he and his father are producing whiskey during the prohibition era and again this is sort of a period of history where we're going to be touching on and while it seems like an odd thing to read to your kids it looks really interesting as it seems that there is some conflict in them as they start seeing the effects of the things that they're selling and he uh, the son starts to have some conflict about that so I'm excited to read this I think it'll be a good talking point we love to tackle hard topics in books like this because it's a great opportunity to um, really bridge that gap and to talk about things in an age appropriate way. So I'm really excited to dive into that. The next one is Kiss the Dust. And I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about this one, but I was talking to my friend Megan over at Pennies and Salt and she said she was gonna give it a try and I trust any recommendation that she has. It's about a girl and her family who flee to the mountains. They um, only have what they can carry and it's an interesting story of this refugee family. So I'm excited to check this one out. This one looked really fun. It's called The Inconvenient Alphabet. And it's Ben Franklin and Noah Webster's Spelling Revolution. I'm just gonna read you a small excerpt from the front. It said, once upon a revolutionary time, two great American patriots tried to make life easier. They knew how hard English words were to spell. They knew the sounds didn't match letters. And they knew the problem was an inconvenient English alphabet. In 1786, Ben Franklin, and No Webster teamed up. Their goal, make English easier to read and to write. But even for great thinkers, what seems easy turns out to be hard. And this just looks like a really fun book. It's got great pictures and it's got fun illustrations of some of the common spelling rules that don't seem to make a lot of sense. So it says out with silent letters, out with unnecessary extras like doubling, um, one vowel for short sounds, and so on and so forth, and how they try to change the English alphabet, but to no avail. What I love about this, I'm excited about this, 
because I have several kids who struggle with dyslexia. So to them, the English language literally makes no sense. They get very frustrated by these things. And so I thought it'd be kind of fun to acknowledge some of these things that they get frustrated by and see where this story leads us. It's actually pretty thick um, for a picture book. And so I just thought this would be a fun thing that they would enjoy doing. On to box two. All right, first up, we have Precious and the Monkeys. This is about a girl detective in Africa, and um, it was actually recommended by my friend Wendy over at Plan Prep Prey, and I saw it in one of her videos and just had to have it. It looked like such a fun thing. I really wanna get my kids into detective stories. Um, I loved them growing up, and this is a series I had never heard of before, so I was sure to grab one. Also, I grabbed one of the Childhood of Famous Americans. Um, these books I used to love reading as a kid. This one's on Elizabeth Blackwell and The Girl Doctor is what it is titled. And so I just thought these would be fun. We enjoy digging into different historical characters and, and digging into their background and learning more about them. It really helps connect the history when you have those stories that go behind the people who we read about in the history books. So I thought this would be a fun one, especially for my daughter. And so we'll see what she thinks. This is called the Mississippi Bridge. Again, a new one that I'm gonna try out. It's about a um, African-American family in the 1930s. They are getting on a bus, they're all sitting down, and at the last second, some white passengers come on and they are ordered off the bus. And that it's all about the things that happened after that and as a result of that. And so I'm excited to check this one out and get to um go through they've got great illustrations in there and it got really good reviews on the story so i guess we will see and while most of these are very educational and school-based we did purchase a few birthday gifts for my kids because all of my kids have birthdays during the summer so this is for my son um a star wars darth vader book so this one is um this is what i love about um book outlet is they have fun activities as well as books so it has a small booklet here that takes you through all these fun facts about Darth Vader, which is one of his favorite Star Wars characters. But then it also gives you right here, um, inside this pocket are different pieces that you can punch out to make a 3D Darth Vader mask or like a bust of Darth Vader. And so I know he's gonna love that. So this is one of his birthday gifts. Speaking of birthday gifts, we um, got some for my daughter. I got the Sophie Mouse, The Great Bake Off, and The Critter Club. Again, both of these were recommended by Megan over at Pennies and Salt. Her daughter apparently loves these series, and I just thought they were really cute and might be fun for my daughter to start digging into. We also are going to try out the Nancy Drew Clue um, crew. I honestly, um, I used to read Nancy Drew books growing up. Obviously, this is a newer version, but I thought it might catch her interest. And again, I'm trying to get them to dip their toes into mysteries, as I really think that it would be something they would enjoy. If you guys have read this newer series of Nancy Drew, let me know down in the comments what you think. I think this book was like $1.90, so I just threw it in the cart just because I thought it'd be fun to try, um, but I honestly have no clue what it's going to be like. Also, for my daughter, she is obsessed with horses. You know that fun phase where they all go through and they're really excited about horses, so I grabbed a few horse tales for um, her as well. And I don't know if we'll use these as read alouds or if I'll have her read them herself. I don't even know if we'll have them read this year, honestly, but they were just ones that I thought would be great to have on the shelf. There's Stormy Misty's Foal. It's actually part of a series that is on her reading list. It's geared towards eight to 12 year olds and um, which is perfect for her. And so I have a feeling while it won't be required reading, it'll be, definitely be something she picks up. And then the perfect horse look like one that could be good to add to our read alouds if we have time. So it says that during World War II, the spies uncover an unexpected secret that Hitler has actually kidnapped the world's finest purebred horses and hidden them in a secret um, breeding farm. But starving Russian troops are drawing closer and the horses face the danger of being slaughtered for food. There is still a little time to spare and Colonel Hank Reed and his soldiers must cross enemy lines to heroically save some of the world's most treasured animals. In this thrilling young reader edition of the New York Times bestselling book, Elizabeth Letts highlights bravery in the face of incredible odds. This tale will shed light on little known pieces of our past and speak to history fans and animal lovers of every age. And I just thought that sounded like too good of a book to pass up. We also got Tucky Joe and Little Heart, which this one just looked like a great book. I really try to avoid buying picture books at this point because I have a, a bit of a picture book addiction. Um, and my kids are also just growing into the next phase, but this has got a good amount of words on it. It's not too um, little for them. 
So it's about a boy named Johnny Wall, and he is from Kentucky. He gets into the army at 15 years old and is sent overseas. And he meets up with this little local girl who uh, grows to help him. And they build this beautiful friendship despite having language barriers and different cultures. And I just thought it sounded like a great one. Down to our final stack here. We've got an Ellis Island Christmas. I love to find different Christmas books that either come from a historical perspective or look at different countries and cultures. So this one talking about a family coming from Poland to America during Christmas time just sounded like a great addition to our Christmas collection. We also love these step into reading level three and four books. Again, with having readers that have dyslexia who struggle with reading, sometimes these kind of books are the perfect thing for quick book reports. They don't have an overwhelming amount of words on a page, and um, but they go through different historical figures. So this one is Thomas Jefferson's Feast. And this one's Eliza Hamilton. And so we've got several of those. And again, they are so cheap on Book Outlet. I love to just grab them when they go on sale. The last book in our collection is called Abby and um, it's by Jeanette Keynes. It's geared towards ages four to eight, so it's geared a little bit younger, but it is about a family who has adopted a little girl and how she wants to revisit those memories of being adopted. Our family, if you are not aware, is pursuing adoption through the foster care system, so anything having to do with adoption is a big win in our house, and getting to use those as talking points with our kids, and just as we're all excited, and that's what we're all talking about and thinking about right now. So anyways, I'm excited to dive into this. That is a lot of books, and I realize I have a bit of a book buying problem. I understand that admission is the first step, but I will probably continue to buy book outlet books. Let me know if you like seeing these um, unboxings and seeing what kind of fun treasures we're getting. I will try to update you if there are specific ones that you want updates on. I'm not going to update you on every single book, but if there are specific books you want updates on, I'll try to sneak those into future videos. Be sure to like and subscribe as we have a lot more fun content coming out this month, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!